GNOME is arguably the very most popular desktop environment for the Linux ecosystem, and it is getting a rather impressive update in just about a week. I mean, there are some major visual improvements in this release. There are some new default applications, some improvements and modifications and settings, and oh, a whole lot more. And before we dive into some of the key changes, I am going to need to thank our sponsor. Setting up your very own Linode on Akamai Connected Cloud. Bet you didn't see that coming. If you don't know, setting up a Linode is setting up your very own Linux server in the cloud. You can pick between a wide variety of Linux distributions or use a one-click installer to spin up a variety of services such as web hosting. With something like WordPress, you can set up a Minecraft server, an easy Docker base server, a bunch of different things easy to access from your own local terminal. And better yet, if you are a new user, you get a $100 60-day credit using the link down below. So with all that, let's dive into a screen recording and check out some of the new improvements. So this right here is my current host system running the version 44.4. We're gonna be using this in some of the comparisons. And the first thing I'm gonna point out is up here where it says activities. This is what it currently looks like and this is what you're probably used to. And this right here is my GNOME OS virtual machine running version. If we click on this here, which this is one of the uh, changes that we're gonna talk about, we're in GNOME 45 beta one. And you can see one of the key visual changes within the shell is this right here. Instead of activities, we get an icon that looks like this. Click on that, it will expose our overview. Now, kind of sticking with the trend of visuals here, this is Nautilus. This right here that I have my mouse over is GNOME 44. This over here is GNOME 45, and we can see some of the visual changes within some of the color scheming here. We could see that this just looks more polished and integrated. The sidebar here with your various folder locations is a bit more compact. The highlighting color is just a little bit different. We have some better integrations here. We have a hamburger menu here for the main menu as opposed to right here. The views have stayed the same. The search is still there. Functionally, it's all the same. We've just had some things kind of get compacted, move around. We could see the background for actual files here is integrated within the title bar. Overall, visually, it's looking pretty good and many other of the applications that we're gonna look at are kind of following this same visual pattern when it comes to the changes. Now there is a blog post on the GNOME website called Rethinking Adaptivity. It goes over some of the problems that they were facing and some of the issues. You could see here this little video giving a demonstration of that issue, the little sidebar popping up. And I can actually kind of mimic this if I go ahead and make this setting page a little bit smaller. Let's close it and reopen it. So if I search settings, hit enter, you can see it's gonna default into kind of the sidebar view and then from there I'm gonna have to go back to about and then we're in here. As if we dive into GNOME 45, we do the same thing. I'm gonna close this out, open up settings again and you can see it doesn't do that. If we come to the actual release notes here and scroll down, we see more information about the new styling and adaptive behavior. This is the blog posting I was just on and this has been adopted in all of these various applications. So from there in the actual settings application, we do have some changes. First of all, you can notice the visual styling changes that we mentioned in Nautilus. From here, most of the information is pretty much the same other than over here in the old version, we see all the extra default information available just laid out for us. With this, we now can click on system details, which will then expose even more information. And if you wanted to, you could easily click on copy, which will copy everything so you can paste your system details somewhere else if you do need to. Now from there, another change has been in privacy, for example, and how the menu system kind of works. We see here in privacy in the new version, we have the categorized subgroups listed here. And when you click privacy in the old version, it will automatically put you in one. So if I go ahead and click on that, it automatically puts us in screen lock, gives those settings. And here it won't do that. If we click on screen lock, you can see basically these settings are exactly the same. It's just a, a kind of an organizational structure change. From there, if we go down to user settings and then unlock this real quick, we have a little information pop up here for automatic login that is new. And then from there, if we scroll up to the sharing panel, it's given us a little bit more information to help us understand these settings that we're changing. So from there, we're gonna dive into some of the new core applications. So if I go over here under utilities, I go to the image viewer, this is new. Go to our hamburger menu and then go to about image viewer. This is loopy or lopi, I'm not sure how to say it. This replaces the eye of GNOME image viewer. 
Real quick, I'm going to save a picture of probably one of the prettiest places I've been to, Yale Lake in Washington. Close this out. If I go to Open Files here, Yale PNG, give that an open. This is your kind of just typical photo viewer, but overall it's beautiful. And we have some pretty basic options. If we go over here, we can copy the image we have open to our clipboard for easy like pasting in Discord or whatever. We can move it to the trash. We have our image properties here. So if I click on that, it gives us a nice overview of everything that's going on. Here, I have some additional options, open with, print, rotate, so on and so forth. The print dialog is absolutely beautiful. Specifically, if I go under preview, Overall, everything looks incredibly beautiful integrated with GTK4. Really specific dials and controls that you can set to go ahead and change this if you'd like to. Overall, this is a really nice application. All right, now this application right here is Cheese. This is the default application for webcam viewing within GNOME. The default is gonna be replaced with this. This is Snapshot. I'm gonna go ahead and give it a quick install on my host machine because it's not very easy to have my web webcam go into a virtual machine. Let's open that up. Let's see if it lets me have both open at once. It does. We got some side-by-side -side action here. So right here is cheese and right here is snapshot. It looks like we might be losing some of the effects that we get in cheese here. Honestly, I don't know if anybody ever actually uses these. Eh. But when it comes to the menu here in the new application, we have preferences, keyboard shortcuts, and about. I'm gonna open up preferences, and over here, we have full screen preferences, keyboard help, and about. If I open up preferences here, we can see the old version definitely has more options, which frankly is kind of disappointing that they are getting rid of something that's more functional, but of course, you could always just go ahead and install cheese on your system if you'd like to. We have a little countdown here. If that's something you need, we can switch between videos as well. So I could record a video here. Obviously, you could do the same thing. Video, you could set up a burst. And if I hit, and for example, let's take a photo with cheese. Three, two. Whoa. Turn my whole screen white. We get a little preview there. It's pretty cool. And then you can actually edit and manipulate things from this panel. If I do the same thing over here, snap a quick picture. We have the picture show up here, so it's the same kind of situation. If I right click on it here, we're not getting settings for that specific picture, we're getting settings for the whole application. So if I right click anywhere, we're gonna get the same things going on. Now one thing, if I go resize, oh, that's just, okay. I was hoping that would have been like the actual like resolution and whatnot. So that is one of the new core applications. Boop. So now we are back in GNOME 45, and I'm gonna touch on some of the core application improvements first with maps. This tool right here is just a little bit prettier, which now the zoom buttons here are actually overlaid on the map instead of within the header bar and the sidebar for navigation. So if I click on this has been reworked as well. So if I go somewhere like Eastern Washington University to maybe Seattle, click on that. Overall, we just have some key visual improvements. Next up, the weather application has some sizing improvements. It now remembers your default um, kind of window size, and it's a little bit bigger to actually allow all these various widgets and things within the daily view. Personally, weather right here is a underrated application in my opinion. Now from there, we're gonna go over to console. This kind of stirred some uh, feathers when it was first announced, mostly because some things didn't work, most notably the um, left to right languages and a couple other things just did not work well in this. But one thing you could do now, of course, and most important is go to preferences and change your custom font. So if I deselect this, we can set a custom font and pick something that we see fit, such as a uh, free mono here. Let's select that, there you go. We changed the font and now it looks more like a uh, terminal from the 80s. And with all that, I do hope you enjoyed this video. Again, it is coming out in about a week. I think September 20th is the official launch date. Obviously, depending on your actual distribution's release cycle and how they update things, it's probably gonna be a little bit longer before you can actually play with it on your system. But if you wanna try it out right now, you can do the exact same thing I did, which was within GNOME Boxes, install GNOME or GNOME Nightly, and you could try it out there. So with all that, I do hope you have an absolutely beautiful day. And goodbye.